pushing that, that it hides our codependencies. And we've come to devalue this term of dependence. Now, I'm not gonna also couple with that that in a, like in a patriarchal capitalist, right, problematic society that dependency is also something to seek empowerment from, right? So I'm not problematizing efforts of saying like, to, like movement towards independence is a problem. That's not what we're here to do. I think Anthony referred to that in the beginning as oppression Olympics, but in general, how have we culturally come to devalue something that is the predication of our very existence, our codependencies? So language at its roots reveals our dependencies on one another. In fact, someone the other day was talking to me about, about being an individual and arguing for the existence of the autonomous individual. And, and just to play that sort of philosophical line of argumentation, um, could there be a, an example of an individual? Um, and language becomes the counter to that in every single instance of somebody giving an example of maybe somebody who even goes, they're connected, if not by their ecological existence, then in their human communities, they're connected to other humans via language and culture. Gregory Bateson wrote about this a bit, and he said, mammals in general, and we among them, care extremely not about episodes, but about patterns of relationships. And as humans, we are all mammals and akin to other species. And you've known this since the literature, we talked about like human animal beings. And, um, we all communicate through that kinship or through our shared dependencies. And that we have, and we interpret experiences by recognizing or being attuned to patterns of our ecological existence. Sometimes this could be understood as anthropocentric, although I'll argue anthropocentric, anthropocentrism is the sort of superior to all other. It's its only human and prioritized human. We are limited to our human interpretations. So just for fun, imagine that you like go home and go to the refrigerator or go to wherever or even here um, and you have a cat or a feline companion that comes up and makes a certain sound and she is saying, she or he is saying, I'd like some food. Though you know very well that they're saying meow or making a noise or gesturing to you. You may be able to correctly guess and give them the food. Of course, that's if you have food in the cupboard or wherever. But what they're actually saying is something about the relationship that they are having to you, right? If you were to translate those, those utterances and messages into words, it would be something like dependency, dependency, dependency. If we were to take all of the metaphors of our language right now in this space, all of these words, the fancy academic ones and the common and colloquial ones, it could be dependency, dependency, dependency. Right? So for me, this is crucial that we recenter on dependency and reclaim dependency from false notions of independence. And that in schools, we stop measuring on competition and individualism based on this sort of independent and establishing oneself as outside of relationship and co-responsible to one another. Right? Simply put, language shapes how we understand and act in the world. Right? So back to education for just a moment. Um, and concluding, it's hard for me to suggest or outline an action plan without including rethinking deeply rooted neoliberal Euro-anthropocentric cultures and traditions around individual, the individual. That being made clear, I'll share a few sort of suggested kind of areas or guiding sort of notes of action um, that I like to take with other educators. One, engage in a dialogical teaching and learning or eco-critical pedagogy that explores in solidarity rethinking assumptions influencing how we as Western industrial humans construct meaning and thus how we learn to relate to each other and to the more than human world. We learned about that in the hip hop thing, get together and eat together, dance together, move together, create, make art together, right? We're, so oftentimes in schools we've learned, learn it from a page, right? do it in your desk, these kinds of ways of enforcing this sort of, this idea of normal um, that's highly problematic. Engage in reimagining education. Engage in that same invitation, not walking necessarily away from schools and places where young people go to, right? But getting in there and reimagining radically what's the possibility for education and empowerment within those spaces. Okay? Engage in supporting diverse approaches of healing. There is no one way. 
right? And so uh, showing respect to diverse epistemologies that differ from the current dominant discourses that we often learn as the one way in schools. Engage in strong alliances with all those suffering and support the oppressed in solidarity while simultaneously working to shift and challenge the dominant systems that often govern the alleviation of the suffering of all marginalized and subjugated being. In other words, be an ally and accomplice to total liberation. Right? So, one place to start, let me skip forward, it's that simple, recognize, celebrate our dependencies, and I got this a lot because there's a longer version of this. <laughs> get, get it? It's coming. Make friends, learn together. We learn what it means to belong when we begin to address how we could frame that understanding as something more than human centered. Right? Okay, thanks. I got a